And it was all brought upon by me. God didn't do it to me. Society didn't do it to me. You know, the choices you made. Yeah, it was all my shit. Everyone's accountable for it. It was all my shit. You know, it was nothing to do with nobody else. It was just a a, a spell of fucking lies. That's it. Do you believe... Do you believe anybody who's in that life can get out? Yeah, I did. It took... 15 more years after I got out of jail to realize that. What was the final point for you that you realized you didn't, you wanted to live out, you didn't want to live in that life anymore? I was here. In LA, I performing? I was in the fucking game. In comedy? I had already booked movies and films and mad TV and What about this Adam life Sandler was more alluring? And, and, and comedy and you gotta remember what life are you talking about? The sales of drugs? Com- like, why, the sales how did of drugs? comedy pull you out of that life? Because it seems like that life was so ingrained in you at that it point. It became my first love. Mm. I knew that it, once I got the taste of it, mm-hmm. like, I'm like, you know what? I'm on to something. Right. I don't want to admit it to myself or nobody else. So the other life was less a, a, alluring. The other life was getting old. Right. You were getting bored it of that. It was getting old yep. and being broke and yep. being desperate. And always wanted to do coke, and always right. I was attracted to the fucking filthy women that don't want to do coke and right. suck dick, and it just gets old. It got old, and then I find myself caring for somebody. When did you meet your wife? In two thousand. In and it took me seven wow. years to stop. Yeah, so she met you in the mi- in, in the oh middle, sorry in the crossover. The tail end of it. Wow, yeah. that's a ride or die lady right there. Yeah. She met you coming out of that life. Yes. You were still in it, though. Seven years. Wow. She loves you. Seven years that I was a productive individual. Yeah. But still. It's not like you came home at five and I'm on the couch playing video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, that's not me at all. Right. You know, when she got home at five, there was vacuuming was done. The dishes were done. The bathroom was clean. I was just a cokehead. Yep. I was, uh, uh, you know, I still sent all this shit. I talk about breakdowns and all this shit. Right. That was all on the coke. So that's why I don't parlez-vous français. Right. You got to get up every day. Yep. And you got to work it. You got to yep. move. If I was doing it at this time and I was snorting until five and getting up at fucking eight. I mean. Come on. Give heart me attack fucking city. Breathe. And I would go home at three and watch Law and Order. At <laughs> dum three dum. And take a little nap. It was to be on A&E. Law and <laughs> yes. Order at two or something yeah. was on A&E. Yeah. And I'd take a nap from three to five, two hours, three hours. I got up to 418 pounds. Whoa. From not sleeping. When you don't sleep. Oh, it messes up all of your system. It messes up everything. And your hormones get messed up. Your circadian system's all messed up because, of, you know, that's your, your sleep regulation. My food. So now that's why I don't do those late shows at the comedy store. You got a 10.30 show at the comedy store, don't even bother. I'll do a 10.15 spot yep. because I know I'm getting out of there at 10.30. Yeah. And I'm in the car at 10.35. Yep. You know, after I get off stage, there's no, there's no Joey Diaz. Yeah. I, my house wakes up at 6.15. So we I, do, I do, too. To, I don't have I like time waking to up early. Or yep. Fucking around at night? Columbus. No. no. It's not I the did 80s that already. anymore. Yeah. I did that already. Right. You already lived that. that life. When I got into comedy from 2004 to 2001, like I said, I didn't know what TV was. Right. There was no TV. There right. was none. I didn't know who played baseball. Right. I didn't know who played football. My life was comedy. Yep. I was on the road. I was doing tri- triple runs. And what's the other guy? Yoda runs. And yep. fucking, you know. I was out there. I didn't have time to fuck it. I'm trying to make 50 bucks yep. to spend 45 on blowing weed. Right. To have five dollars for breakfast. Yep. Like I would wake up with a five to tip the fucking wait staff <laughs> at the hotel. Hopefully it's a buffet. Yeah, you know hopefully it's a buffet. Hopefully it's a buffet. <laughs> hopefully this breakfast is included. Into a hotel and they were like, you have no credit card on file. You and what would you do? Cash. I would call the club and go, I'm in a bind. I lost my ATM card before I came here. Can you bring fifty dollars over or something like that? And they go, come over and get it. I was relentless. I just wow. See, and that's like your your story is so interesting to me because it really highlights that you're your own, not you. I mean, people in general, you're your own worst enemy. And honestly, you can get out of the situation you're in if you if just you want to. if you, if you it, really exactly want to. if you want. It to. takes time. Yeah, it's not going to. Rome wasn't it's, built in a day, and it's not easy. You have to write a path out. Yep. Like, I just knew that the, I knew after the longest year I came out, that was my darkest problem with the drug. Like, that, that yeah. was like a dark year. Nothing really happened for me. Tracy Morgan got a show. Yep. Fucking the dude from Brooklyn Nine-Nine, they put him on uh, Chris Rock's show. 
you know, everybody looked up after that. My career stayed the same or even got worse. Right. So I had a hard time. And then I just saw a lot of people having a hard time following me at the store. Yeah. And you're and like, like, well, what the fuck? So throughout all this bullshit that's around me, this is real. I only had two good things. This brought at the house. And this comedy. And this comedy thing. And then you made that your nucleus. And then when I stopped in 2007, I remembered the other gift. That Baby. I had, that I had never lost. I had never lost it, but I hadn't used it either. What's that? My balls. I was balls crazy from the cocaine, and I was balls crazy from... But I remembered who I was, where I came from, and how I was going to act from yeah. that point on. And I didn't play the Hollywood game anymore. Ugh. Not that I ever played it, but now I didn't tolerate it. Right. And I remember one of my first missions after the cocaine thing was a, a commercial for Hardee's. And just to make a long story short, the guy said some shit to me just because he had a tattoo and a hat with a feather in it. One of those guys, you know, <laughs> I'm the director with his arm rolled up, with right. an assistant. And I went off on him. And he hid in this trailer. And he's like, you're fired. I go, well, wait, who are you going to get at 2 in the morning to shoot in Long Beach? You're going to waste Hardy's budget. And they're going to fire you. Come out here, apologize like a fucking man, and let's get on with this. Did he? Oh, yeah. That's and he amazing. shook the whole time. And he, I've never been spoken to. I think, yeah, because you're a cunt. And it's time that somebody did speak to you. Yeah, like, and he's like, that's shit. respect, though. You're a fucking director. Who gives a fuck? What'd you do? You went to school. I'm at the comedy store fucking every fucking night, yep. gunning for my life. So next time you yell at a white kid that doesn't know any better, that thinks you really worth your weight in gold, you better check yourself. You ain't shit. You put your pants on one leg at a time, just like the rest of us in this motherfucker. Yep. And once I became that, I didn't get as much work anymore. I got a little tough to work with, but always remember. But that's that. worth it because that's for respect. Us. You ain't better than us. Yeah. None of these mother all that's these motherfuckers that don't like to shake hands because yep. they're germaphobes. I'll smack you in the mouth. If it's two in the afternoon and you ain't high, go fuck yourself. Get out of my face. I want you around me like I want cancer in my ball sack. You know what I'm saying? You're going to come around here looking at me with your fucking white eyes, thinking that, you know, I'm going re to reform. Go fuck yourself. My morning starts at 5.30 a.m. Either you're there or you're square. You know what I'm saying?